I remember meeting my husband. I had gone to the movies. Then when we left, there was a little ice cream parlor there. And he says, I'll buy all you girls a Coke. I never drank Coke in my life. I don't like Coke. And I ordered an ice cream soda. He told me from day one, he knew I was a gold digger. <laughs> He went into the Navy uh, on his 17th birthday. When he came home on survivor's leave, she got married on that leave with him because his ship had gone down and he was only one of like 69 survivors on that ship. Ed was passionate, I mean passionate, about helping people because Ed lived in a haunted house. He lived in a haunted house in Bridgeport, Connecticut from age five to age 12. So he said to me, when I got out of the Navy, I said, I'm gonna find out if other people had the same experiences that I did when I lived in that house. From the time that I was about seven years old, I remember seeing lights around people. I realized that I was communicating. My Catholic faith is very, very important to me and still is today, and that helped me to help others. Ed, he was an artist. He went to art school for a couple years after the Navy, and he used to read about haunted houses. And he would drive to these places with Lorraine, and he would take a sketch pad and pencil with him, and he'd pull up in front of the house, he'd sketch the house, take about 30 minutes, and then he'd hand the sketch to Lorraine, and he'd say, Lorraine, do me a favor, go up to the house, knock on the door, and they open the door and say, my husband sketched this nice sketch of your home, he wants you to have it. And he said, maybe, maybe he'll let us in and we can talk about the haunting that they have. And that's how they started. Ed and Lorraine Warren are pretty much known as the pioneers or the grandparents of um, modern day ghost huntings. You know, like um, today, you know, we're so accustomed to, you know, watching TV shows about paranormal investigations, you know, um, ghost hunters and stuff like that. But they were the very first ghost hunters. They're just regular, ordinary people who would who live next door, who come and give you, a, bake you a cake for your birthday. It's just something that they had a calling or a vocation to do, and just very normal people. I mean, you sit and have a conversation with them about everyday life, you'd never know the kind of work they do. You know, they started a society, the New England Society for Psychic Research, in 1952. You know, back then, there, were no, there was no internet. There were no ghost hunters on TV, reality shows. There weren't a million demonologists. You know, back then, Ed was only one of seven recognized demonologists, religious demonologists in the nation. He was the only lay demonologist. He was the only non-clergy. It's pretty amazing their, um, their careers have spanned like three, four decades, you know, going as far back as I think the 50s and well into, you know, the 80s and 90s even. I've been experiencing supernatural occurrences. Go ahead. They were the very original ones that pioneered the modern day style of ghost hunting, you know, with like, with cameras, with equipment and stuff like that. So that was kind of part of what they did. All right, it's 918. We're headed down into the cellar where the door's just opened on its own. Ned and Lorraine have always tried to teach what the demonic can do, what they can fester on Earth. And all these people that play with tarot cards, and all these people that play with Ouija boards and ruins and so forth, all they're doing is they don't realize they're opening up a doorway to that demonic world, and they're making that choice. They're making the choice, they've opened the doorway, and a lot of times they're not prepared for what will walk through that door. And just like when you go to church and you pray, and you hope the angels hear you? Well, when you use a Ouija board or tarot cards or such, you're opening a gate that's to the other side. And yes, a spirit may come through, but also a demonic entity may come through. And you have to be prepared that that's the choice you made, and you have to be prepared to deal with that. When you give recognition, when you go into a place where a hunting phenomena is going on, and you give recognition, you give it, you give it energy and then it can do whatever it wants. Sometimes, for me, I say, I'll, I'll, do, I'll make the sign of the cross, name of Jesus Christ, go away, and go back to where you're coming from, when I get really overpowered. 
I've had to actually bring Lorraine Warren to a case where a paranormal investigator thought it was a fun hobby, decided to go out and do EVP sessions, take photographs, try and make contact with the spirit world. She made contact, all right. A demon actually followed her home. We helped cleanse her. We helped cleanse the house. We tried to spiritually protect them. Lorraine gave her specific directions. Don't pursue paranormal investigation. You're too open for this. That's why this thing followed you home. I, I, don't, I didn't have any fears. Now, that's been that way all my life. You know, I always feel that I'm, I'm protected. So that must mean a lot to me being able to still do this kind of research work because I really am I'm not so scared. I'm not frightened of it. it. Because if you are, you would attract energy to you that really could be harmful. There are many things in this building here which have been involved in extremely dangerous occult activities. To touch one of these items would be the opposite of touching something holy, something blessed. Throughout the course of, of their career, I mean, they've collected many items and I think a lot of people have a lot of questions. Why do we keep these things here? Why aren't they burned? Why aren't they buried? They bring things home with them so that nobody else will get hurt. Yeah, it's like keeping them. guns off the street. Feel free to look around. Just don't touch anything. Wow. This is crazy. It's weird to look at an artifact of, of sorts and go, well, that's just a doll, or that's just, you know, a crazy looking mask, or, or that was, you know, some, some instrument. But it was what was associated with it. Everything you see in here is either haunted, cursed, or has been used in some kind of ritualistic practice. Nothing's a toy. Not even the toy monkey. <laughs> Don't touch it. I think we put a line in about why not just burn them or throw yeah, them in an incinerator. incinerator. And, and Lorraine had said, because again, it's their vessels. You know, you, you're just getting rid of the, the bottle that the genie's in. I'd rather know where the genie is because it's attached to this. This here is the infamous Annabelle doll that we spoke about. And that's been depicted in the movie, uh, The Conjuring. I'm gonna open the case up. I normally wouldn't do this, but I'm not gonna touch the doll. I'm not gonna touch it because as you know, it's very dangerous to touch an object like this. Her and her husband were very special people, and they could hold things down. Um, and, and for now, it's like I said, it's, it's a rain's love of, of all things that I think holds everything here in place. And I just help her by my prayers each and every day to keep things quiet. Ed used to say the fairy tale is true, that God exists, that evil exists, and it depends on which one we elect to follow. And in modern day, I think they have proven beyond a, a shadow of a doubt that good exists and evil exists. And it is up to us as far as which way we choose throughout the course of our life. When you go into a home where infestation is taking place, you know, where haunting phenomena is taking place. I, I walk around the rooms in the house. I can tell if it's a human spirit, and I can tell if it's an inhuman spirit, because it's terrifying. And it's sometimes you feel like some cloud is coming right down, almost taking your breath away. Well, before I was a priest, the, uh, the paranormal was something that really did not exist. There was a quote that Ed used to say to people that would come to the lectures and say that it was, they, they didn't believe in it. And he asked them, are you Catholic? And, he, and if they responded, yes. And he'd say, say the Holy Trinity for me. It's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. A third of your religion is based on a ghost. 
A third of your religion is based on a spirit that you can't see. I believed in God, I believed in the devil, but the devil never really affected you if you had faith. Because I've become a priest and I, I, I've met a lot of people. I know that the devil does affect people in various different ways. The conjuring is very, very accurate. Which brings us to the three stages of demonic activity. Infestation, oppression, and possession. The infestation, that's, that's the whispering, the footsteps, the feeling of another presence. Actors that are playing here, Vera is playing Lorraine, and uh, Patrick is playing Ed. This is the real Lorraine Warren. <laughs> I've been a big fan of Anna Lorraine Warren for a long time. Doesn't matter what kind of research you do uh, about the supernatural or the paranormal, at some point you're bound to come across their names. I've known Ed and Lorraine Warren for 22 years, and Ed and I were talking about what uh, would make a good movie out of all his cases, and Ed really was fixated on this Perrin Farmhouse case. My name is Ed Warren. It's November 1st, 1971. I'm sitting here with Carolyn Perrin, who, with her family, has been experiencing supernatural occurrences. So that was just the idea of the Perrin family, you know, uh, basically the incidents that occurred to the Perrin family when they moved into their, their Harrisville home. And it was just kind of a general idea at that point. Wow. You hear that? I don't hear anything. Exactly. Oh, OK. <laughs> I knew the Hayes brothers' work pretty well. And so they were the first writers that I brought the project to. It felt like a, a family buys the wrong house, pulls up a U-Haul, and gets haunted. And what we were really drawn to is there was mention of Ed and Lorraine Warren in there as a case investigators. This parent case was a particularly seminal case for them as well. I think it, 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 really, it really laid the path for what eventually you know, became their careers, including Amityville and beyond. There's something horrible happening in my house. Could you come and take a look? You know, there's usually some sort of rational explanation. I have explanation five daughters for... who are scared to death. I'm so afraid this thing wants to hurt us. I mean, you have a daughter. I mean, wouldn't you do anything you could to protect her? Please, please, can you come and take a look? I always thought that their life story would actually be very cool to tell. And so, you know, it was just one of those things that, um, that I thought, um, you know, I'll keep an eye out. If, uh, if anyone's ever actually making a story about uh, them two, uh, I'd love to have a shot at it. They weren't larger than life. Uh, the egos weren't bigger than the people themselves. And I think that that was something very important that this movie gives to a lot of people. And, and it gives a lot of hope for these younger investigators that are coming up. It gives them a, a model to, to look up to. I've been seeing the dark entity that haunts your house. I saw it first when I came through your door. And then I saw it again with the girls when we walked into the living room. And it doesn't matter where you go, this dark entity has latched itself to your family, and it's feeding off you. Well, Lorraine and I both feel uh, that what your house needs is a cleansing, an exorcism. Ed and Lorraine Warren changed my life. Ed and Lorraine Warren led me down a religious path that other people never even dreamed of going down. Introduced me to the supernatural, introduced me to the paranormal, gave me a better understanding that there is something after this. There's something to look forward to, just that they helped people, that they loved everybody they helped. Ed and Lorraine were innovators because they had the professionals there that could work with the families. If there was children, they had the parapsychologists that could talk to these children at their level. That was something that to this day, I mean, a lot of groups could really learn from as far as networking and bringing in these professionals. And I think that's something this field needs at this point in time. You've got to be able to provide some form of closure. And that was something that I think made the Warrens unique. You know, if you do it for the wrong reasons, it's always going to catch up somehow or another. If you do it just for the excitement purpose, like to see something uh, happen in the house without regard for helping the other people that are tormented, that's not helping other people. If you're doing it for the right reason, you're, gonna, you're going to endure and you're going to you know, actually prevail. So I think that their legacy is to have a new generation of ghost hunters that can help others. I'm not going to retire. I am not going to retire. 
Now, as long as I keep my health, I, I don't really want to retire. The demonic is always there to tempt.